everything that could ever go wrong with an R129 Mercedes and more. Let's get started. So this is a 1994 Mercedes SL600. No, not a SL500, an SL600, which is the V12 model. These are very sought after because of the V12, and it does appear to be in pretty good shape. But this is another one of those situations where it's buyer beware, and just like Hoovy has gotten scammed on some of the cars he's bought, that has happened again on this customer's car. I really feel bad for the customer. He's a really nice guy. He really didn't deserve this to happen to him. So let's take a look at this thing before we dive in. So these do have a very beautiful front end. I really like the styling of these cars and they are a nice car but they can be very difficult to sort. And as you can see right off the bat the headlight is cracked. It is glass, not plastic. And although that might be expensive to fix that is the least of this customer's worries. And we go down this side here, we can see that the ride height is a little off. That is one of the fault codes with this car. The suspension system is having a lot of errors right now. The front rides high, the rear rides low. No serious damage down this side. It does have the hard top installed at the moment. As we get to the back, you can see it is an SL600, as denoted on the trunk. Tail lights are in good condition. It is a little dirty, it has rain spots on it. But as we go down this side, it is in decent shape as well. And you can see it says V12 there on the molding. Everything else looks pretty good as far as the body is concerned. Just by looking at the car, you would think it's in really good shape but it is not. Let's take a look at the interior. So here we are, ladies and gents, look at that dash. It's a very iconic, iconic Mercedes dash up there. You can see it does have 96,000 and exactly 500 miles. While that does seem like a lot, that's not that terribly many for being that this is a 94. If we look up there at the dash, this is a nice, really dark, dark brown color, but that dash is in amazing shape. All the vents have all of their little louvers in it. This is looking and presenting very well. We look down at our classic Mercedes stereo, all of our HVAC controls look good as well. Classic shifter pattern for our Mercedes as well. And as we slide over, we do see it does have a beige leather and it's looking really good. Door cars are in great shape as well. As we move to the back seat, or really the back shelf, looking really good. As we look at the headliner, you'll see there's some sag going on up here. So this obviously would need to be addressed. But again, this is not the worst part of his troubles. One advantage is sitting here, and being that I am 5'9", I, my head is not touching any of that fabric that is falling down. So that is one plus. But as you see, we can see it's kind of coming in, hitting those headrests. So definitely annoying, but again, it gets much, much more annoying. So as we end up here, back at the steering wheel, nice classic Mercedes design. But I'm really wondering, if everything is looking this good, what really is the problem? So being that this is a 1994 model year, it's not going to be anything with SBC, ABC, or any of the modern Mercedes systems. Those aren't even on this car. I want to show you guys something on my phone real quick. It's a recent sale of an SL600 on Bring a Trailer. So as you can see in that picture, you can buy a nice sorted SL600, I'll bet a newer model, for around 18 grand. A really nice one. We're going to go over everything that's wrong with this car, but the things that are wrong with this car will be 15 to 20 grand to fix them. I'll let that sink in for a minute. That's right, you heard me right. 15 to 20 grand to fix everything on this car. The customer purchased this thing for 7,500 bucks, and just as we looked around the car, we looked inside the car, it's like, wow, this is turning out to be pretty nice. It's not so bad. But you guys have no idea. Wait till we show you the items that are really bad on this car. 15 to 20 grand, guys. Obviously, when the customer came in, we showed them everything, and 
and kind of went through it. You could tell that his heart sunk. He was really sad. He was like, oh man, this, this bites. I got scammed. It's like, yeah, I know. It's, it sucks. So he's going to take the car. He doesn't want us to do any more work, and we're just going to let it go. We're not even going to charge him anything. We, I feel really bad for the guy. He got took to the cleaners. So let's start with the first item. Okay, I'm going to take this uh, hard top off and see where we go. your brand new Gucci suit all over you but just wait there's more you just bought that million dollar house and now this is all over your driveway bro all from the convertible top system but just wait there's more and just when one side looks pretty nasty it goes ahead and does the other side too all over your nice new driveway. That's not just with the SL600, that's with the SL500, even the smaller SL380s. They all have the same system. This car has a hydraulic soft top, which right now has a hard top on it, but it is hydraulic as well to release it. And it can't even release the hard top because the cylinders are blown out. We all know the story about how these systems like to splooge all over you when you have issues with the cylinders and you just saw it with your own eyes all over your new Gucci suit. This, like I said, is not fixed for a hundred bucks. There are 11 hydraulic cylinders that run this system. So we're not going to just fix one or two and call it good because the next weakest link in line is going to fail and in 60, 90 days, you'll have the same problems all over again. You'll bring it back to the shop, we'll fix the next one and then you'll have it for another 60 or 90 days and the next one down the line will fail. It can't hold the pressure. And this can happen eight or 10 times. Here in the header panel right here above the windshield, there's a cylinder right here and there's another one right across the way there that does actual locking of the soft top or the hard top where it locks in right here. So there's two, we'll take a couple steps back down inside the body, right behind the doors, there are two on each side, a really large one, and a couple smaller ones that operate some arms for the soft top. Back here, there are two more cylinders that operate lift and lower the soft top. There's also some locking mechanisms, one right around in here that locks the soft top when it comes down. And then there's two more after that that are right behind this panel. You can kind of see right through here, there's some of it right there. You can see some hydraulics and things. I don't want to pull it all apart because we don't have the okay to, to do all that, but underneath this, where the spare tire sits is the actual hydraulic pump. That powers the whole system with hydraulic pressure. So obviously we have the okay from the customer to film this and demonstrate everything. We actually have rags posted right inside the driver's door to catch that fluid that just came down. We didn't just pour that all over his interior or everything. We definitely wanted to demonstrate to those who have not been familiarized with the R129, when these things fail, it's it's not just disastrous, it's messy, it's disgusting. It gets all over you. Now we have to go through and pull apart most of all the interior. We have to pull the header panel down. We have to pull the side panels all apart. We have to pull in the trunk all apart and start pulling all of these 11 cylinders out. And it's not done in 30 minutes. It's a 10 to 12 hour job. Then we take all those cylinders and ship them to Mercedes Hydraulic Cylinder Repair in Topeka, who I've used for many years. And he takes and rebuilds them with all new seals and makes sure everything's sealing right and sends them back. And it generally can be upwards of a grand or more, depending on if there's any damaged cylinders. It can be right around a grand. It could be three or four grand. You just don't know until you send them to them. And it gets expensive really fast. And you haven't even fixed it yet. 
Usually when we send those to him to be rebuilt, it can take a week or two before you can get a turnaround and get them back. If I was going to get the go-ahead to do these, this would be my 14th set of R129 cylinders. I've done a lot. When I first met Tyler, that was a big thing that we did, not only Land Rover head gaskets, but we did R129 tops. We did a lot of them. So that right there alone, four to six thousand dollars, probably in the upwards of five or six. You start getting in there and finding out sensors are bad, some of the contact sensors or relays or things that were not planned for because the top doesn't operate, you can't test it. It gets very expensive fast, but that's not where it ends with this car. You say, well, six grand is not that bad. How did you get to 15? Let's open the bonnet. Yes, the bonnet. Here we have the venerable V12, and the engine itself is not really troublesome. It's actually a really good motor. It's powerful. It sounds good. But you guys know when you mention these two words, 1994 and Mercedes, in the same sentence, those of you who are gearheads know automatically biodegradable wiring harness. Look at this, guys. It's already down to the bare wires on this cam adjuster, this magnet here. We'll go over to here. You can see it just crumbles. I'll just barely touch it and it just flakes off. The insulation's coming off all through all the harness of this car. This is very expensive to fix. Right here's the throttle body harnesses. Those were done. You can see that it has new wiring. You can't really see too much, but it's been redone. And the customer figured, he took it upon himself and said, well, they did this harness. They probably went ahead and did the other two. But that was a wrong assumption. And you should never assume those things when you're buying a car from someone. You should assume that they're trying to rip you off because most of the time, not always, but most of the time, there's some hidden, hidden secrets about a car. So this is a really special engine. It's almost 400 horsepower, 420 pound-feet of torque with no turbos, no superchargers, lots of power, very smooth, smooth as silk. It's a really a good engine. It's unfortunate what's gone on here. And no, I didn't further damage his wiring harness by touching the flakes on it because it's already roasted and toasted through the whole thing anyways. So the engine itself has not failed. There's nothing wrong with the engine. But with these wiring harnesses, you guys know, in the early 90s, they attempted to make biodegradable wiring harnesses that were good for the environment. And over the course of 30, 40, 50 years or later, they would degrade and kind of meld back into the environment without having a bunch of plastics. But they degraded way faster than they anticipated. With engine heat and vibration and everything, they just crumbled into pieces. This one's no exception. The customer thought that they had been replaced. They, he was literally a gut punch to him when he found out they had not been replaced. This thing has suspension issues. It has an ASR light on. It has several other issues. It runs really bad. And now we know why. It has an upper wiring harness, a lower wiring harness, and also the throttle body wiring harnesses. There's three harnesses. These are not easy to get to. They're very difficult. A lot of things have to come apart to get to them. And I talked with my buddy, who's Ed Bolian's Mercedes mechanic in Atlanta. The guy is a guru on these older Mercedes. I said, how about these wiring harnesses on the SL600? Can you even get them anymore? He goes, nope. Now, some people have commented in different places, oh, you can get those still. Yes, you can for the SL500, but not for the SL600. And I asked him, I said, well, what do you do? His name was Cameron. He, he has a shop in Atlanta. I said, what do, you, what do you do? How do you fix this? He said, he's done a few already by hand. He had to hand make every wire of the harness, top and bottom, he charges around eight to nine thousand dollars. If you can find these harnesses, they're usually one, two, three grand a piece. These are so rare and so hard to find. Kurt, was there, did they make them with better quality product, or is it still the same biodegradable wire that's going to trash? 
They do have the upgraded harnesses, and there was for a while you could get these harnesses pretty readily, but as these cars are getting older, there's less of them on the road, they don't make them anymore, especially for the SL600. So no, don't go posting in the comments. You can get those for 100 bucks, 200 bucks. Yes, you can for the 500, but not for the 600. If that were the case, my friend Cameron would not be hand wiring and making the harnesses for people for nine grand. So $9,000 here, possibly $6,000 there. We're at $15,000 and we haven't even gone through to make sure the transmission works or gone through and check everything else out. And we haven't addressed the broken headlight or the sagging headliner or other issues going on with this car. Like I just mentioned, I wouldn't be surprised if we could approach $20,000 with this car very easily. And just like I just showed you in the picture, you can go to bring a trailer for $18,000 and get us fully sorted, good running, SL600. When I showed the picture to the customer, he, he right away agreed. He said, it doesn't make sense to dump this kind of money. He may get the wiring harness fixed. If he can find it cheaper, he may call the people in, who did these harnesses here. Maybe they can do the rest a little cheaper. He's going to try a few options before he just gives up. But as far as it getting fixed here, it's basically totaled, guys. Just be careful guys out there, wherever you're searching for cars and you find one that looks really nice. I see frequently something like this for sale and it says, just needs a tune up. You guys just saw with your own eyes, this needs so much more than a tune up. Don't fall for that trick. You're not gonna put spark plugs and coils on this and solve the problems that it has. And if a person could double their money by doing a tune up, why wouldn't they do the tune up? because it's not a tune-up that's wrong. There's so much more wrong. There's some cars out there you can take a gamble with, especially if you're a mechanic, just like you saw the Juke video. It's coming along very nicely. We're gonna do another video on that soon. It's turning out way, way good. I'm very happy with the results. This is not a car to take a gamble on if you're not a mechanic, because you can get it home, take it to the mechanics like what happened here, and literally get a devastating gut punch. Me and Mrs. Wizard actually talked about this situation. If I were to purchase this car, would it be worth it? And even with me doing the work and supplying the parts, it's still not worth it. I would not be interested in fixing this car and keeping it. So the idea of, well, a backyard mechanic could get this thing going. Yeah, they could, but it's not that much more just to get one that's sorted. It's almost just not worth it. That's why I mentioned, unfortunately, it's almost totaled. Insurance wise, this car is totaled. So be very careful out there, guys, please. I don't like this seeing this happen to my customers. It's, it's sad, it makes me really sad. But if you're curious what kind of tools we're gonna to use to work on all these cars in the shop, actually, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below and we get a small cut, we really appreciate it. And make sure to hit the subscribe button because there's always really cool stories and really cool cars pulling into the shop. Thanks for watching.